Today, I'm asking the question, is your gaming PC harming the planet? You see that beautiful, powerful gaming rig you have sat on your desk? It doesn't just consume electricity when you hit that power button. No, it has an environmental footprint that starts long before then, from massive factories to water-thirsty chip plants and toxic chemical waste. Your PC actually has a hidden side, which we're going to take a look into today. Before a single graphics card ships, the process of making it burns through an enormous amount of energy. Fabricating circuit boards, displays and batteries isn't just high tech, it's actually high carbon. Industry reports suggest that the majority of a device's lifetime emission actually come from the manufacturing process itself, and not from usage in your home, which I actually found really interesting. So what that means is that before you even unbox that shiny GPU, it's already responsible for tonnes of CO2 emission that's released into the atmosphere. The electricity you use while you're gaming, on the other hand, even during those marathon sessions, is only a fraction of the overall footprint. So, in other words, the bulk of the environmental cost actually happens before your PC even reaches your desk. So while gamers should be mindful about power use, you can actually feel a lot better knowing that simply enjoying your games isn't the main source of emissions. The real opportunity for change lies in how devices are actually built and not how we play. In all honesty, I was really surprised to learn this. I always assumed that the real footprint came from how much electricity we used while we were gaming. But actually, it turns out that the impact is locked in even before the PC leaves the factory, which, yeah, is a big surprise. Chips, you know, the really important part of your computer, the brains of your computer, are made using water, a lot of water. Producing ultra-pure water, or UPW, needed for rinsing microparticles off silicone wafers, demands approximately 1,400 to 1,600 gallons of municipal, or tap water as we know it, just to create 1,000 gallons of UPW. And it's not a minor side effect either. It's massive. A typical large semiconductor fabrication plant can use 4.8 million gallons per day. That is actually the equivalent to the annual water use of a city with 60,000 residents. So the scale of this actually becomes a lot more staggering when you look at it industry-wide. So chip fabrications collectively consume as much water as the city of Hong Kong, which, just in case you were wondering, is about 7.5 million people. And what's even scarier is these plants are often located in some of the driest parts of the world. We're talking countries like Taiwan and Arizona. So those are regions already under water stress. For instance, and I might struggle to say this one, the Taiwan Semiconductor Man Manufacturing Company alone withdraws about 150,000 tonnes, so that's roughly about 150 million litres of water today. That actually accounts for about 10% of, forgive me for not pronouncing this right, Hsinchu City's total daily water supply. And actually, during Taiwan's record-breaking drought in 2021, the government actually had to truck in emergency water to sustain chip production. Moreover, 40% of existing semiconductor fabs sit in watersheds that are projected to face high to extremely high water stress by 2030 to 2040. Just so you know, watershed is an area of land where all the rain, snow and groundwater drains into a common water source like a river, for instance, or a lake or a reservoir. It's basically the natural catchment area that supplies water to communities, farms, industries and ecosystems. And then you have water stress. So just to confirm what water stress is, this refers to the balance between water supply, so how much clean, usable water is available, and water demand, how much people, farms and industries need. And what's even more concerning is that over 25% of fabs under constructions, fabs meaning fabrication plants, and more than 40% of the ones announced since 2021 are coming up in those same risk areas. So what that means is that every time a new generation of chip hits the market, it isn't just a leap in performance, 
it's actually a massive spike in water demand, often in places that can afford it the least. But here's the optimistic spin. This isn't a problem that's actually without a resolution. So more fabs are investing in water recycling and reuse. In fact, a plant in Arizona plans to reclaim approximately 65% of its water use. And that includes Intel too, actually. They're partnering with local governments to build reclaimed water facilities to supplement dwindling water supplies. And advances in technology are actually helping with this too, like systems that reuse cooling water or treat rinse water safely for repeated use. So now we're going to focus on the chemical cocktails. So electronic assembly requires or relies on a chemical cocktail of solvents, acids and heavy metals. When handled correctly, these are actually quite manageable, but in proper disposal, especially in regions with weak regulations, can mean toxic runoff that seeps into rivers, harms ecosystems, and even can threaten human health. The UN has actually reported that we use over 50 million tonnes of e-waste every year, and much of it is laced with these toxic substances especially when the waste is dumped or processed unsafely. It poisons water, soil, and even the air that people breathe. But the good news is that stronger rules like the Europeans' ban on toxic materials in new electronics are starting to push manufacturers towards safer practices. So yeah, this was another thing that surprised me whilst digging into all of this, was that how much of this actually still goes on today. Even with all of the modern tech that we have in place, I thought this kind of pollution was actually a thing of the past, but it's still a massive issue in some regions. Who knew? So if we circle back to the question I asked at the beginning of the video, is your gaming PC harming the planet? Well, the truth is yes but actually mostly in ways that happen long before you tap that power button and tap on your keys. The good news is that manufacturers are starting to use renewable energy and recycle water and phase out toxic materials. Progress is happening, but maybe just not quite fast enough. And here's something we can all do, myself included, that will really matter. We can simply just hold on to our PC or GPU for an extra year before upgrading. This can cut its lifetime footprint dramatically. And what surprised me when researching all of this was just how much of a big difference this can make. The bonus, it also saves you a bit of money. You don't have to feel bad about skipping the newest 50 series GPU because in most cases, last year's hardware is still more than powerful enough to handle today's games. So that's it for today. That's the end of the video. If you enjoyed this breakdown, please, please, please don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button um, so that I can carry on giving you more dives into the hidden side of tech. Thanks again ever so much for watching. I appreciate each and every one of you and I'll see you on the next one. Same time, same nerd channel. Take care, guys.